Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Sports News. I am your host, Kyle Alexander, and I'm I'm trying to get as many videos out this week or in the next couple days. So last video, we talked, uh, we did my mock draft, my second mock draft, and I figured why not keep the theme going with the NFL draft, and since the combines this week actually, it, the events start on March, for, this Friday I believe, March 1st. So I figured why not go with the theme and some guy, uh, think of some guys to keep your eye on. So this video is my top NFL draft sleepers. And you guys actually voted on this video in my first mock draft. You said I should do it. So here it is. And keep in mind, most of these people are seniors because I, I kind of watch the Senior Bowl scout. So um, yeah. And speaking of Senior Bowl players, my first player who I feel like is kind is slowly rising on a couple people's uh boards is andy isabella wide receiver from umass he's he's not big by any means i believe he's five nine but um no he's kind of he's kind of faced like height issues or like um he's kind of been short and he had to face adversity with his height but this year man he he was on fire uh, he had a a hundred and two a hundred and two catches, one thousand six hundred and ninety eight receiving yards, which led the nation. By the way, so the whole time this man leading the nation in receiving, never even heard about until the Senior Bowl. Uh, also hauled in thirteen touchdowns and averaged a hundred and forty one point five yards per game, which also led the nation or led the FB FBS. And he also trained with Randy Moss. Uh, he's also been training with Randy Moss to get ready for, like, the draft and stuff. And I like Andy Isabella. I'm sold. Uh, I saw in the combine. He was pretty good in the combine. Um, I don't know his exact stats. But he was he was making the most out of his targets. I know he had a touchdown. But, you know, Andy Isabella, he's, he's one of those, like, shorter, fast receivers. And I already see the Patriots drooling over this guy because... You know, I'm not trying to be racist, but you know, New England and their white receivers is just like, that's like, basically like this, like, like this is the Patriots, this is the white, this is the white receiver, boom, it's a perfect fit, just, uh, just goes together. No, that was a terrible metaphor, or yeah, terrible metaphor, but you get the picture. But honestly, I would like to, I would like to see the Ravens draft this guy. Maybe and maybe in the third round they don't have a second round pick so maybe like third round or trade back into the second round and get him but um yeah oh hmm. I forgot to do or no I'll just I'll just do the news after this because I for it was a couple headlines I wanted to go over before this but I'll just do that at the end of the video so yeah Andy Isabella he has speed and um. I forgot who I was watching NFL Network and they were saying that like to watch out for him at the combine and they say he might run the fastest forty. So yeah, I'm excited for this guy. Hopefully I see him wearing purple and black in the Baltimore City area. Hopefully playing at MT Bank Stadium. I just I'm just sold on this guy. Yeah. Uh next up, another offensive player. We have Tracy McSorley, quarterback from Penn State. Um, last year was probably his peak or his best year, and this year he was not too bad. Uh, just the numbers were numbers were iffy, but I mean not too bad. Fifty three point two completion percentage, two thousand five hundred and thirty yards, eighteen touchdowns and seven interceptions. Now that by any means will not get it done in the NFL. But, but I mean at the same time, Case Keenum may um, he he's on a thirty mil contract. And he put up some of the numbers like that. But, I mean, Trace McSorley, had, he was pretty all right in the senior bowl. Uh, mm, drop my water bottle. He's, um, I'd say he's pretty accurate. Um, he can make, he can make some, some reads. But, yeah, I think Trace McSorley has, he has the potential to, I think he has potential to be a starter. I want to say he will, I'm not going to say he might be a breakout, but, I believe he could be like a um I'm trying to think of an average quarterback. Like a I guess Joe Flacco when he was good in Baltimore. Like a Joe Flacco ish. Or or a Matt Stafford type. Like where he's not he's not like the best, but he's a pretty good 
quarterback, like a Matt Stafford-esque type quarterback. And, yeah, honestly, I could see the Patriots taking him in, like, the second, third round, even though I had them taking Daniel Jones. But if they don't, it's like if they don't take Daniel Jones and it's, like, second or third round and Trace McSorley's on the board, I could see the Patriots taking him. And he could be... He could take over for Brady in the Belichick scheme. All right, the third player on this list, and this is in no specific order. Of course, I just it's just in order of like when I've heard of him. But uh, yeah, third is Charles Amenahu, the defensive end from Texas. Again, heard about him at the Senior Bowl. I like this guy. Uh, Fifty. Mm, that's Tracy McSorley. Uh, Forty-five tackles, eighteen tackle for tackles for lo, tackle for losses. Nine and a half sacks and one forced fumble. Um, he's, I say he's pretty good. He had a, he actually he also had a great um, senior bowl game, and again I wouldn't um, just like Andy Isabel I wouldn't mind him coming to the Ravens in like the second round if they if the Ravens trade for a second pick, but um, he's a he's a pretty good pass rusher. He can use his hands and get. I think he, one thing he could work on is like shedding blocks, or he can shed blocks, but like I think he he could get better at that, and yeah, he could be a pretty good pass rusher. I say his ceiling, hmm, ceiling could be I don't know Brandon Graham. I guess I don't, Brandon Graham keeps popping in my head for some reason, but I would say. His ceiling could be a uh, maybe like a maybe a Brandon Graham. Yeah, because Brandon Graham's pretty underrated. So I say maybe he could be a Brandon Graham type player. Or I can't really think of it. Maybe or a Cameron Wake esque type. Um yeah, I'm, I hope he, I hope he lights up. He, mm, I hope he can find his way into the league and be a top pass rusher. All right, next person, we're going back the offense as I have David Sills, the fifth wide receiver from West Virginia. Uh, you look at the stats here: sixty-five uh, catches, nine hundred eighty-six yards, and fifteen touchdowns. Pretty good year. And Sills. He could he can be a slot or outside. He had he has some speed, and I say he yeah I say he could be. Uh, he was in the Senior Bowl and he he wasn't too bad, but he could be. I think he could be like a wide receiver number two. I say his his ceiling would be a wide receiver number two, like a like a Wolf Fuller type maybe like a number like a. I want I don't think he could be a number one receiver. I don't know. Maybe he proves me wrong, but right now I see him as like a number, as a number two or a slot receiver. All right, we're heading to Washington as we have the running back Miles Gaskins, uh, two hundred and fifty nine carries, one thousand two hundred sixty eight yards, twelve touchdowns, and four point nine yards per carry. Five, but depending on if you round up. Mm. Gaskins, he's he's a workhorse. He can he has speed. He's a workhorse. He can, he'll he'll fight for yards. He can like find he'll find a way to get more. Yard, he'll just find a way to get yards. And again, I went my I I went my the Ravens or the Eagles got him because uh, the Ravens need a number one running back. I, I, Gaskins he can be a number one running back. Like I could see him being like a Cam Alvin Kamara type. But um, yeah, also. Actually, I could see him in Tampa Bay. That wouldn't be a bad fit. Uh, yeah. Even though Gaskins is, regards like, one of the top running backs, like, he's kind of been under the radar-ish. But, yeah, but he's on this list anyway. Next up, uh, we're staying with running back as we have Jordan Scarlett, the running back from Florida. He, had, he on 131 carries this year, he totaled in 776 uh, rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns, and 5.9 yards per carry. Uh, Jordan Scarlett, he could, he's he's pretty big weight wise, I'd say. Or yeah, he yeah he's kind of like sort of kind of he kind of built weight wise, and 
he could be, I can see him being a power back or, yeah, I can see him being a power back type. Um, some teams I can see, like, he could be a, like, power back type, maybe, maybe the Eagles or, um, um, yeah, Tampa Bay again. Now, not too many teams really need running backs, or is like, I don't really know, but, uh, like, it's not really too many teams that need running backs, or maybe, actually, maybe George Clark could go to Green Bay, you know, they have three running backs, but it's, their running back situation is not the best. Um, yeah, I think Jordan Scarlett could be, he could be a bright star, in, or I won't say bright, he could, he could be a pretty, pretty good running back in the NFL. And we're staying with running back as we have Dexter Williams, not Dexter Lawrence, but Dexter Williams from Notre Dame, uh, 995 yards on 159 carries. 12 touchdowns and 6.3 yards per carry. Saw him at the Senior Bowl. I'm sold. He's a good running. He's a good running back. He has some. He has speed. He can. He he kind of has some power. He can push his way through. And I kind of see him as like a Mark Ingram ish type. That like he can just pop. He can just push his way through. Or right, he could be a power back. But um, he could also be a receiving back, too. So um, I hope he could find his feet in the NFL and become, and hopefully live up to his um, live up to his name on this draft sleepers list. Hopefully he, can, hopefully he will be a sleeper and he'll just explode in the NFL. Um, next up, we're going back to defense as we have Kingsley Koki. Uh, Kingsley Coke, I'm gonna say is K O K E. Uh, yeah, Kingsley Coke, defensive tackle from Texas A&M. Um, he's a pretty big guy, or yeah, he's a pretty big guy. Uh, 51 tackles, 11 tackles for losses, seven and a half sacks, and a forced fumble. Um, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. He's pretty good in stopping the run. He can. Get to a quarterback, he has seven and a half sacks for a D tackle. Actually, isn't bad. Um, and then, yeah, I know. I think I think I can know. I think I know a couple teams that can use him. Like the, uh, uh, I don't really know, but yeah, I know he he could find. I just I could see Kingsley Coke finding himself on an NFL roster and terrorizing quarterbacks for years to come. Next up, we're moving a little bit to the outside as we have Anthony Nelson, a uh, defensive end from Iowa. Uh, his stats, 45 tackles, 13 and a half tackles for losses, nine and a half sacks, a force, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown. Uh, he's, he's good. He's, he's a good edge, uh, edge defender. He can get to the quarterback. He can he knows how to use his hands, and yeah, I could see, yeah, I could see him finding himself a roster spot, and then could the yeah, he could be quarterbacks a quarterback's worst nightmare. I know I'm kind of going through this quickly, but yeah, this is just pretty much, this is pretty much what I have to say. Um, hey, Anthony Nelson, he's. Yeah, he's a pretty good defensive end, and I could see him. Maybe Cleveland. Maybe he could find his feet in Cleveland. You know, they get they get him. They're like, all right, we could, maybe can he be the guy to pair with Miles Garrett on the outside or on the other side, and then he lives up to the expectations or he surpasses expectations, and then boom, that's that's a ooh, that would be terrible. Ooh, that would be. A terrible um, thing to see from an offense's perspective. Uh, yeah. All right. Next up. All right. We have another receiver. As we have another West Virginia receiver. As we have Gary Jennings. Um, he hauled in 917 yards on 45 catches and 13 TDs. Good stat line. He's pretty big. Got some. He's got some size to him. And. He also, I also heard of him from the Senior Bowl, and he had some pretty good highlight plays. So Gary Jennings, he could, 
he could be. I see him being the number two receiver. I don't really see him being a number one. I could see him being a number two, maybe. Or I don't, maybe he could be a number one in uh, Tennessee. Or or he could be a number two. I could see him being a number two in Green Bay. They get Devontae Adams, Jennings, Gary Jennings, and then uh, Cobb. Yeah, but Gary Jennings, he's got some size. He's got some pretty good hands. So, mm. so yeah, but really, I just see him being the number two receiver. That's that's his ceiling. Uh, all right, we are going to head south as we have Clay Johnston, a linebacker from Baylor. Had 99 tackles, five and a five five and a half tackles for losses and one sack. Um, he's a middle linebacker, I believe, but he's a big hitter. Um, he can he has some he has that nice speed to go uh, if it's a screen pass or if he sees a receiver going to the flat, he has that speed to just straight B line to the receiver and like ta and tackle him before like right as he catches the ball. Clay Johnson, he's a good hitter, good tackler, and yeah, I could see, I could definitely see him finding uh, an NFL roster spot. Uh, next up, we have Jalen Hurd. A he played when well, they said he played wide receiver and or he started off as a running back and then played switched to receiver, but yeah, he I have him as a receiver from Baylor. Okay, so two Baylor teammates. Uh, uh, Jalen Hurd, wide receiver from Baylor. He's big. He's six four. That's why I saw. I was like, "How do you play running back?" I was like, "He must have been like five eleven or six foot, and it just grew." But yeah, he's pretty big receiver. He's six four, and he hauled in nine hundred and forty six yards and four touchdowns. Yeah, I kind of see him. I could see him being like a Julio Jones esque player, like. Um, not necessarily being as good as him, but I could see him like um, winning jump balls, and then yeah, I could see him winning jump balls, getting yards, and also being a red zone, uh, a red zone threat or end zone threat. Now, if, if they run him on a goal line fade, I, I think he has a, I give him seventy five percent chance, seventy seventy five percent chance, and. Yeah, he, I can see him finding his spot on the roster. Don't really see him. Or, yeah, I think he could be a number one receiver. I think Jalen Hurd could be a number one receiver. And he's actually pretty good in the open. He's pretty good in the open field. Or he's he's good at getting separation and getting open. So, yeah. Look up Jalen Hurd if you're interested. Next up, we have Tony Pollard, wide receiver and running back from Memphis. Tony Pollard, he's a running back, but he they have him as a receiver and running back. Now this year, it looked looked like he played both, but he's pretty even stats. So this year he had seven seventy eight carries, five hundred and fifty two yard rushing yards, six rushing touchdowns, seven point one yards per carry. Then on the receiving side, thirty nine catches, four hundred and fifty eight receiving yards, three receiving touchdowns. And that all adds up to 1,010 scrimmage yards or yards from scrimmage. Tony Pollard, I, yeah, I like him. He's he's pretty good. Um, I see him being the Alvin Kamara type. Like, Kamara, I don't think he, he hasn't gotten, even though he's only spent two years in the league, he hasn't gotten 12,000. Yeah, not 12,000. He hasn't surpassed 1,000 rushing yards, but he's surpassed 1,000 yards from scrimmage. So I could definitely see him being a Kamara type. You um, know Ravens, maybe Eagles, Buccaneers. Um, um, yeah, uh, Buffalo, actually. I forgot Buffalo needs a running back. So, Buffalo, maybe take him in like a third, third, fourth round-ish. I'd say third. In the third round. And then he's able to take the reins from LaShawn McCoy. Uh, I have a uh, pretty high praise for Tony Pollard, and I see him. I see him being the Alvin Kamara type. He can see him being like the do it all back. Next up, we have the guy who's been in college football forever, Hunter Renfro, wide receiver from Clemson. I saw him in the Senior Bowl. I was like, all right, finally, this boy is going to the NFL. 
It was like he was there when Deshaun Watson threw him that touchdown pass uh, to beat Bama in the championship. I was like, this, I feel like this man had been in college forever. Like it feel like I wasn't. It feel like I wasn't even thought of when he was in college. But yeah, he's finally going to the NFL. Uh, Forty nine catches, five hundred and forty four yards, and one touchdown. I kind of see him being. I give him Edelman ceiling. Like he can I think he'll start off as like a special teamer. He he could be a return man and probably work his way up to being a fourth or a third receiver or a slot receiver. And yeah, I think Hunter Renfro, Run Hunter Renfro, I give him fourth to fifth, maybe even sixth. I'd say fourth to fifth. And you know, just be on the lookout for Hunter Renfro. And yeah, he could be. I could see him being a good slot receiver or like a good number four receiver. Yeah. Uh, all right, these are my last two peak players. They're both corners. So the first one we have um we have Iman Biggie Marshall, uh, corner from Clint from U. I was about to say Clemson USC. He forty eight tackles, five five and a half tackles for losses, and six career interceptions. He's a pretty good corner. He's pretty. Pretty physical. He's aggressive. He he'll go for the ball. You know he'll like he'll be able to like get a hand in there, like break up passes. And I could see him. I see him being a corner number two, or he could. I think he could play. I think he could be, play nickel, but I believe I think he's more of a cor number two corner. Um, maybe Eagles pick him up, and yeah. Maybe you can pick him up, and then he becomes a good corner, maybe even the best corner. Uh, and then Ronald Darby goes to two. If the Eagles resign him, which I hope they do. All right. And the last and final player, the last corn, uh, corner on the list, or the second corner, is Lonnie Johnson Jr. from Kentucky. Now, he fit kind of fits the mold for new corners in the league. Like, the you know, like the new mold for corners is, like, they people want these big corners. He fits that mold at 6'3", 206 pounds. Uh, this year, he allowed nine first downs in coverage, which was second in the SEC. He had 23 tackles, one interception, and one forced fumble. Hmm. He only allowed... The fact that he only allowed nine first, down, first downs in, coverages, in coverage this year, that impressed me. So... That that already gives me the fact that he's aggressive, like, or maybe not aggressive, but he's physical. Like he he'll get a hand in there. He's great at breaking up passes, and he also fits that mold for new corner new corners like those big physical corners. I think if he has a good combine, that could bring his stock up to like second, third round pick, and mm, Ravens got corners. I wouldn't mind. I mean, I wouldn't mind if the Ravens not, but. I could see Eagles, Bucks, you know, Giants, and he could actually take off with the Giants. Like he could be like a starter. But, mm, yeah, that's my take on Lonnie Johnson. Um, yeah, just Lonnie Johnson, like I said, fits that mold. And a great combine that will definitely raise the stock. All right, so that is it for the sleepers. Now we're going to get into the headlines that I was supposed to say at the beginning. First up, um, oh yeah, James RRP to James Harden's uh, thirty like streak of thirty dropping thirty plus points ended at thirty two games, and yeah, that's just pretty much what his streak ended for dropping like thirty plus thirty plus points. And yeah, I don't think he's gonna win MVP. That will be in one of my next episodes. So um, yeah, just stay tuned for that. Uh, again, for M another NBA headline, Carl Anthony Towns, after surviving a cra car crash incident in which he said he believed he had a five percent chance of getting out of, drops thirty four points and twenty one rebounds in his game back. That's that's kind of the stuff that makes sports special. Is like stuff like that. The cat, he's. That was a good game, and we we're, we've seen this potential, but like we're just seeing like some more. This is just like him unlocking more potential that he probably didn't know yet, or like he knew he had, but it was like, or yeah, you know, like it was it was like you know something like it's in the back of your head, but you don't really know it's there. 
Like, yeah. That's what I think it is. That's how I think his, that game says about him and his potential. And he just made it. He made an all-star appearance. He has an all-star appearance, so maybe, yeah, maybe uh, he can win. Uh, yeah, maybe he becomes a great center. We'll see. And, oh, and the Bengals have offered up former first-round pick John Ross up for trade after two seasons. Honestly, I think they're giving up on him too early. He could be the slut. But I don't care because I would like the Ravens to get him. Oh, uh, that's how, yeah, that's how about uh, Ravens cut Crabtree. And I saw that, like I said, I saw that one coming. Because the only receiver the Ravens would keep, I see them. The only receiver I see them keeping is Willie Sneed from the receivers that we signed last year. Um, we're not, they're not going to re-sign John Brown. They're going to keep Willie Sneed. And, yeah, honestly, if we trade for John Ross... I think that will give the Ravens, like, the speed they need on offense and the like, speed at receiver. And he could also be a playmaker. And, yeah. Also, I could see him in Green Bay. I, yeah. I'll probably talk about that more in my next episode, but, yeah. Mm. They're giving up on I think they're giving up on him too early. But at the same time, I feel like a different a change of scenery is exactly what he needs. So... Yeah. And, all right, so that will be it for this episode. My next episode will be my NFL off-season predictions. And then after that, I don't know either. Or, yeah, after that, I will do my NBA MVP race or who I think will, who I think should win MVP. And then I'll talk about two, I'll talk about a player who's, a player who slept on in the NBA from, the draft class a year ago, you know, like the Donovan Mitchell, Kyle Kuzma, that draft class, and then I'll talk about someone, uh, NFL quarterback who might be a bust, a former first round quarterback who might be a bust. So, hmm. so that'll be it for this episode on sports news. I am your host Kyle Alexander, and I will talk to you guys next time.